Buckle up. We're about to get controversial. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. And y'all know me, I like to be controversial. Living on the edge, man. In the statistics community, they don't call me Dustin. They call me rebel without a correlation. Let me start by telling you why I'm recording this video in the first place. So on my YouTube channel, I get, uh, whenever there's a comment made, it comes through my email and alerts me that, hey, there's a comment. And a year ago, I got a comment in my email that kind of surprised me. This video makes misleading claims about rank-based statistics. Hello, and welcome to my channel. Would you like to come in? So yeah, the initial comment kind of rubbed me the wrong way. But fortunately, the commenter went on to explain what they were talking about. And here was their response. We'll go more into detail later on what they said. Now, what did I originally say? Well, let's take a trip back in time and find out. Now, there are a few things that I just will not talk about other than right now in passing because I think they're super lame. Deal. In biology and medicine, these procedures are extremely popular and I don't know why, they're useless. In my opinion, you can have like a non-parametric T-test. I think, I think that's called a Wilcoxon and then there's a Spearman rank correlation and then I have to look these up every time because I never use them. The Kruskal Wallace and the Man Whitney U. So these are all um, non-parametric procedures that you use when you have screwy data. And when I was a bio statistician, I use these all the time because I didn't know any better, but now I know better. So all these are basically just transforming your data into ranks. So it's just sorting the people in terms of highest score to lowest score and then analyzing the sorted data. I, I don't like that idea uh, because you have all the disadvantages of transformation. So you lose the original scale, the variable, and you're not actually modeling the data. You're modeling the ranks of the data. You should model the data. If, you're, if linear models don't fit, then use a different model, folks. So yeah, these other methods are old, outdated, and the only people who use them are doctors and biologists. Yeah. I guess that ends my controversial opinion for today. Although among statisticians, I don't think it's controversial. I think it's just, anyway. Wow, that background music is really loud and super distracting. I really wish somebody would have told me that. But then there was a bit of a snag. YouTube auto-deleted his comment. So I couldn't even reply to him. And I don't know why they deleted his comment. You know, this is also at the same time that they removed the dislike button and they were all talking about how YouTube needs to be a positive space. But it really wasn't that negative, so I don't know why YouTube deleted it. And so I started the process of trying to Google this fellow and figure out if he and I could have a chat. In the process of trying to figure out who this guy is, he leaves another comment linking to a Stack Overflow question. Actually, I guess it's a, uh, actually, I guess it's cross-validated, not Stack Overflow, but you know, same thing. So yeah, there is a Stack Exchange question about my content. You know, my life's ambition is to have a Wikipedia entry. Then I'll know I've arrived. But a stack exchange question? Yeah, wasn't on my bucket list. And by the way, I've linked that page below so you can see what the discussion was all about. And in there, in response to this question, I said, maybe I'll make another video. Maybe we'll have an open debate on it. So here I am, Galen. I'm responding to the challenge. And let me tell you, I'm not pulling any punches. Gloves are coming off, man. Not really. It turns out I actually really like Galen. He makes lots of useful comments on my videos. So yeah, he's a cool guy. But I'm not gonna let that change the facts. I'm gonna emphatically state my opinion on non-parametric statistics. And I hope to see your response. Before I talk about what Galen said, let me address one other thing. So in that stack exchange, some guy commented on my video and said, what is the merit of a random person's opinion on the internet? Is that person a world leading statistician? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> a senior figure in some international statistical association? Well, yeah, I got a participation trophy once. 
I strongly suspect that someone like Wasserman won't be throwing away all his non-parametric statistics books in the recycle bin just yet, and ASA won't stop giving awards non-parametric statistics. Won't stop giving awards non-parametric statistics. Won't stop giving... Uh, there must be a typo there. In the immediate future. Oh, snap! Boom! Yeah, what do you say to that? Well, unfortunately, this guy is totally misrepresenting my argument. Galen's criticism was about my position of rank-based non-parametric procedures. Again, rank-based non-parametric procedures. I said nothing about all non-parametric procedures. And it turns out Wasserman's book is not about rank-based non-parametric procedures. In fact, I think he would probably agree with my assessment that those have really kind of sort of become obsolete. Instead, his book is about modern robust methods and lowest lines and that sort of thing. Fortunately, Galen didn't misunderstand what I said and gave a very good argument. He said, the rank transform preserves monotonicity, which means the order of the data isn't changed. That if one guy's score was higher than another, if you transform it, it's still gonna be higher. And estimators such as Spearman's correlation tell us about come on otonicity. Come on otonicity. Oh, that's a hard word to say. Come on otonicity of pairs of variables without the difficulties that come with modeling. I generally agree that modeling the data is preferable as it demonstrates a more complete understanding of the data generating process, but I don't think it is always practical. This impracticality sometimes comes from scalability issues and other times it is because of difficulties that come with accurately estimating curvature in the presence of noise. So in summary, what he's saying is that, yeah, usually it's better to model things, but sometimes it's not feasible to model things. Now, do I actually agree with that? Yes. What, were you expecting some Jerry Springer style drama to happen here? Actually, we agree. We agree that rank-based transformations preserve monotonicity, because they do. And we also agree that modeling data is superior to hacking your data as you would with rank-based procedures. But we still disagree on something. I personally don't think rank-based procedures should ever be used. He thinks they can be used sometimes in some circumstances for a quick and dirty analysis particularly when there are scaling issues or, as he says, accurately estimating curvature in the presence of noise. I think what Galen is talking about here is convergence issues. If not, please correct me. Um, and I don't have time to go into convergence issues, but long story short, sometimes um, the algorithms that are used to estimate models are really, really complicated and the computer just can't find a solution. So in the presence of convergence issues, is it a good idea to use rank-based non-parametric statistics? I still don't think so. For two reasons. Every time I can think of that you would have a convergence issue, there is no rank-based equivalent for that. So maybe you're doing a mixed model, for example. As far as I know, and I could totally be wrong here because this isn't my area of expertise, but as far as I know, there are no rank-based non-parametric tests for mixed models. The original rank-based procedures are modeled after t-tests, ANOVAs, and regressions. They're not designed for these really complex situations. So... Again, I could totally be wrong, but I don't think there's ever a situation where you're going to have a convergence issue because it's a complex model where there's actually going to be a rank-based equivalent for that model. And second, and maybe more importantly, you can fix convergence issues. Not always, but often, if not most of the time, if you have a serious convergence issue, that means you're probably misunderstanding the model and you're asking it to do something that doesn't make sense. But assuming your model is actually properly specified and it makes sense, Convergence issues are, I want to say they're rare, but mixed models, I've been doing a lot of mixed models lately, and they're actually not that rare. You do have a lot of convergence issues, but they're not like issues that are going to break the analysis entirely. It still estimates something. It just is less trustworthy. But even then... If you really cared about convergence, you could always do a Bayesian model. And with Bayesian models, you still might have convergence issues, but in my experience, they're a lot easier to deal with than they are with like a linear mixed model. So yeah, I still think they're useless. And I also think the costs are greater than the reward. So the reward or the benefit is, yeah, it's easier for the statistician, but the cost is that you might have a misleading conclusion 
And if it's a misleading conclusion that gets you like super excited, like, wow, I discovered something amazing, and the actual model isn't so optimistic, you may never end up getting to the point where you followed up with a proper analysis because why would you want to? The original model was good for your career. So in short, I guess Galen and I agree on a lot of things, but we just disagree on the uselessness of non-parametric statistics, rank-based non-parametric statistics. But on the other hand, maybe we agree more than I originally thought a year ago. So between that comment and now, uh, one of my papers got published, and it's about random forest models. And random forests are non-parametric models, and they're not rank-based. And what I said in the paper is... Non-parametric models are simply hacks. They allow us to temporarily acquire an answer to a question in such a way that we don't deceive ourselves, e.g. by violating a statistical assumption. Arguably, the ultimate goal of research is to have precise mathematical parametric models, but often these non-parametric models are a necessary pit stop. That's basically exactly what Galen was saying. Yeah, ideally we have mathematical models, but sometimes you need something quick and dirty. Or in my words, sometimes non-parametric models serve as a pit stop. And again, where we differ is I don't think rank-based procedures should really ever be used as a pit stop, whereas other non-parametric procedures could be used as a pit stop. And I don't know this, that this is necessary to do right now, but I'm going to go ahead and, I mean, the thought came to me, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, that quote in the paper is really just like the tip of the iceberg of something that I believe um, as a scientist. And I think there are a lot of scientists who believe this way. Um, my belief is that nature behaves lawfully. Or in other words, or that's kind of a weird word, lawfully. Nature follows laws. And my belief is that those laws can be expressed mathematically. So I see science as the process of uncovering the mathematical structure of nature. And when we fit a model we are positing what that mathematical structure might look like. When we use non-parametric statistics, it runs counter to that notion. Non-parametric statistics don't actually model the mathematical structure of nature. Instead, they modify the nature of your data so that it kind of sort of looks like a mathematical model. So it's just a hack, a temporary solution to get you an answer. And so that's why I see non-parametrics at best being a pit stop and at worst, with rank-based procedures being completely unnecessary and we probably shouldn't do them at all. And by the way, this view that I have that nature is lawful, uh, not every scientist agrees with that. And I'll go ahead and leave some links in the description. And that's getting into like the philosophy of science, which I am ill-qualified to talk about. But it's also something that I do spend a lot of time thinking about. So let me just summarize my opinion. There is a cost to doing rank-based procedures. You lose the interpretability of the estimates, so a slope doesn't mean what it meant before. A Cohen's D doesn't mean what it meant before and those sorts of things. But more problematic to me is you're not actually modeling the data. You're hacking the data to meet the assumptions. So instead, I would rather use non-ranked based procedures, such as modern robust methods, or lowest lines, or random forests, or something like that. And when we use those, we use those as a pit stop toward modeling. So for me as a statistician, modeling is the ultimate goal. Because again, I believe the world behaves mathematically. And modeling the data rather than modifying the data to meet your assumptions is going to get you much closer to that reality. So yeah, that's my opinion and I'm sticking to it. Well, for now. Of course, I'm going to remain open-minded. It may be that Galen gives a point that I didn't think about and I might change my mind on this. And if I do, I'll let you know. So what do you say, Galen? I look forward to hearing what you have to say, Galen, but also anybody else. I'm happy to hear your thoughts, see what your opinions are on rank-based non-parametric procedures. So yeah, that's all I got to say. Peace out.